up people, how are you doing? I'm having a fantastic damn day. Welcome back to the channel. Obviously, we're going to be talking about Arsenal, trying to replicate Mikel Arteta's 3-1-2-1-3 formation. This is obviously the offensive build-up style of play that he is looking to try and replicate at Arsenal. Um, I haven't really seen him do it of late. Of course, uh, it was more so with Thomas Partey slotting it at right back, which is why we have him there. Um, but obviously, the injury to Timber, as well as the injury to Thomas Partey, has kind of stopped Arteta from you know following through with his plan and having Kai Havertz play in a bit more of an advanced role. So obviously we will be talking about those tactics and ways that you can replicate and recreate them in your game of FC24. So if you do enjoy this video, please hit that like button down below, subscribe if you are new, as well as I have obviously replicated the 4-3-3 Arteta tactics before um, for obviously FC24. So if you haven't seen them, I will link them at the end of this video right here, right now. Um, so yes, if you haven't seen them, go click on them. Let me know what you think in that video. So for the formation going forward, I have gone with the 4-3-3. And what I've essentially done is I've made the attacking midfielder into a center forward, as well as I've made the two wide midfielders into central midfielders. So th there's no other real major changes to it. So it's one goalkeeper, three center backs, one DM, two central midfielders, one center forward, two wingers, and then of course, one striker. Now with the tactics going forward under Mikhail Arteta with this 3-1-2-1-3 formation, there's no real tactical vision that I thought best suited or fitted it. So custom is the best way to try and replicate what Arsenal are trying to do and, and produce on the field when they are in this formation. As for the defensive style, it is set to pressure after loss of possession. So you are going to look to try and turn that ball over immediately and try and, you know, aggressively press. And we do have certain players' instructions set to aggressive interceptions so that they can be involved in trying to win that ball back nice and high up the field. With the team width, of course, you do have a very narrow base um, with your three center backs um, at the bottom of it. And, and they don't really try and, you know, reach those wider regions of the field. So it's very hard for them to try and prevent those crosses. So... You will require your midfield as well as your two wings to try and help with that. But more so, you do have very strong physical center backs that are all very capable of winning the aerial duels. As for the team depth, however, it is set to 80. And now this does help with in and out of position, of course, whether it's trying to play certain players offside with, a, with an offside trap or potentially trying to pin the opposition in their own half. And like I say, this does help with possession, trying to win that ball back if it's hoofed up the field, circulating it back and playing continuously, piling on the pressure on your opposition. A nice high line of 80 does help with that. The offensive side of things, the builder player is set to slow build up. Of course, this does help your, your centre-back show for the ball a bit more, help them get on the ball effectively and start the offensive build up from the base of your formation going forward. It does also allow you to progress the ball nice and comfortably through the final thirds of the field until you get to the attacking third, where you'll look to try and break down the opposition's defense a bit more effectively. As for the chance creation, of course, Mikel Arteta with Arsenal, it's a possession-based team. They do try, you know, look after the ball as best as possible, have those little passing triangles in and around the opposition's half, making sure that it's very hard for the opposition to try and get onto the ball. So you do need to try and look after it as best as possible. The width is set to 70, and this does help with um, allowing you to work the ball into those wider regions of the field, whether, whether it's Trossard, Martinelli, Saka, you name it. You want your attacking wide players to be able to get onto the ball and attack the opposition's defense at an angle, either trying to work in crosses or cutbacks or potentially trying to work inside themselves and try and get shots off for themselves. Um, but at the same time, having a width set to 70 does help with obviously a very stacked midfield that you do have. I mean, you've got four players in and around there, so they do need a bit more space and more or less trying to stretch the field does help with that. As for the players in the box, of course, it's a very attacking lineup. So you are going to try and overload and overpower the opposition with trying to get as many bodies into that attacking third as possible, trying to latch onto crosses, cutbacks, uh, working the ball into the box, of course, you want to have that. Normally, it will be at least one of your wingers getting into the box with the likes of Kai Havertz as well as Jesus, and then potentially maybe a Martin Odegaard or maybe even the likes of uh, Declan Rice. They'll make those attacking runs instead of attacking third. And then finally, as for corners and free kicks, as for always, it is set to fall. Moving on to the instructions and of course, starting off with David Raya between the sticks. He is set to having a balanced approach for his saving on crosses. Of course, he is fairly decent at doing so, but I think these last few weeks have really shown that Having him claim those aerial balls isn't the best and it's not what he's known for. Of course, he is known to be a sweeper keeper. You are playing a high line. You need a very progressive keeper to be able to plan from the back, starting the offensive build up literally from the goalkeeper, whether it's a goalkeeper restart or trying just to reset the offense 
um, trying to draw out opposition players. David Rea is one of the best at doing so, um, which is why, as well, I've gone with him to be a sweeper keeper. Moving on into the defense, we've got the likes of Saliba. He's set to his base set of instructions, whereas the likes of Timber and White, they've got the same set of instructions. Both of them will be set to overlap, and that does help them get into the midfield when need be, as well as step up. You want them to be quite imposing on the opposition at times, be very aggressive with them, trying to make sure that the opposition are not comfortable on the ball. Then moving on into the midfield, starting off with the base of it. Of course, Thomas Partey naturally slots in as that right back. But of course, when you do switch to this game plan, he will look to naturally take up more central areas and try and be the DM of the team, trying to be the playmaker from the back, collecting the ball either off of the defense or the goalkeeper, and then progressing it forward. So he will also look to try and cut out pass games and stifle the opposition's build-up play of the offensive um, style. He will also look to try and drop between the defenders. Now, this is to try and maintain the, the structural integrity of this shape that you are trying to go with for the offensive buildup, uh, making sure that he is the deepest midfielder of the lot. His interceptions are set to normal, as well as his, as well as his um, positioning freedom is set to stick to position. You want him in the central, central areas of the park, making sure that he's running things, making sure that he can potentially be an outlet ball if need be. I often find that if you are uh, attacking the opposition consistently, they do set, tend to set like a, a bit of a, a low block at times and too many bodies in and around there, you more times not, cannot get anything done. So he can be the guy that more or less tries to reset that by drawing opposition players out. So if you pass the ball back to him, naturally the opposition will look to try and send bodies forward. And then that obviously opens up a bit more space, which Thomas Partey can potentially look to try and manipulate with a quick ball in to the box or potentially looking to try and spread the play out wide. As for his defensive positioning, of course, like I said, he does start off as a natural right back, so he will still need to cover those wider regions as well as the wingers will do the same thing. Moving on to our left-handed sided midfielder, the likes of Declan Rice, he will look to try and support the likes of Thomas Partey with him being able to stay back when attacking. So he will also have a bit of a deeper um, natural position compared to the other attacking players. His um, support on crosses is set to stand there to the box. He can look to get into the box in some moments, and I would applaud you guys if you did say, you know, get into the box. But more times than not, you want him on the edge of the area, looking to try and facilitate and rotate play, um, trying to work into those wider regions, trying to get a better opportunity for his teammates. Um, his interceptions is set to normal, as well as he is also set to cover the wing. So he will also look to try and work into those wider spaces, tracking back defensively, trying to pick up those runners, like I say, in those wider regions. And then as for his positioning freedom, it is also set to stick to position. Moving on to the right central midfielder, the likes of captain Martin Odegaard. He is set to having a bit more of a balanced approach, so he will be a bit more of the box-to-box -box player in this role. He won't always look to try and break into the box, he looks to try and facilitate on the edge of the area more times than not. He will also try and lead the line in terms of the pressing with the likes of Saka, Jesus, Havertz, as well as Martinelli. And then as for his defensive positioning, just like with Rice, he will look to try and cover the right-hand side, picking up those runners in those wider regions. And just like Declan Rice, he is also going to try and stick to his position. Onto our centre forward, the likes of Kai Havertz, he's here to stay central, so he won't look to drift too far wide at times. He'll look to more or less try and be that target man, getting onto those, those crosses that are whipped into the box for him. Aggressive interceptions are set to be on for them. Like I say, with the instructions, you are trying to win this ball back nice and high up the field when possible. Um, as well as his defensive support is set to basic. So sometimes he will look to stay forward, other times he will look to drop a bit deeper, link up play more effectively with the midfield. So moving on to our wingers now, both Martinelli and Saka have the same set of instructions. Both of them will be commanded to come back and help out on the defensive side of things. Of course, there's no fullbacks to pick up those wider regions. Of course, the likes of Rice as well as Odegaard. And I mean, even your, your two wider center backs will try and do that job, but more importantly, it does fall on your wingers to try and you know prevent those crosses from being fired into the box. Moving on to the offensive side of things now, of course, there's no fullbacks in this team, like I've said multiple times, numerous times. Um, so it does fall on the likes of Saka and Martinelli to provide a lot of the width in this team going forward. Their support runs is both set to balance, so they can look to make those lung busting runs in behind. Other times, they can look to come short link up quite effectively with the midfield, work their way inside. Um, maybe get off shots of their own, try and link up with the attacking players like Jesus and Havertz. And then other times they can look to be a bit more of a target man on those wider regions of the field, trying to look to hold up the ball and then facilitate play from those wider areas. 
And then their interceptions is also set to aggressive as well as their support on crosses is set to balance. So sometimes making those runs into the box, other times looking to potentially stay on the edge of the area, rotate the play, rotate the ball, and try and whip in crosses of their own. As you can see here for Martinelli, he has got the same set of instructions. And then finally, we move on to our striker, Jesus, who doesn't really play as a striker. Often, I, I did find that the likes of Havertz did have a bit more of a, an advanced role compared to Jesus, which I quite liked nonetheless. But as for Jesus, he is set to drift wide and get him behind, so he will be making those runs in behind with the, the likes of Martinelli and Saka trying to stretch the, the opposition's back line at times. His interceptions is set to aggressive as well as he will look to come back on defense. And this is where the likes of Havertz does have a bit more of an advanced role compared to Jesus at times. He will look to try and link up with the midfield when need be, as well as take up those wider regions and link up play quite effectively with the likes of Martinelli or Saka and so on. So yes, people, that is my version of Super Mick Arteta's 3-1-2-1-3 formation. If you have enjoyed it, please smash the like button down below it would be fantastic obviously we are on the road to 3,000 subscribers uh we're, we're like less than 400 away so if you guys can subscribe that would be fantastic i would love you forever honestly i, I would but, but in terms of the formation we haven't seen it of, of of late um obviously it's it's got a lot to do with the injuries and i think once those players do come back I do think arteta will more or less try and implement this system and this style of football um once again so Yes, uh, it's, it's quite an attacking lineup, very offensive, very much set to try and overwhelm and overload the opposition. So yeah, I, I think it works out quite well for Arsenal. But anyways, we are going to end off the video right here, right now. If you have enjoyed it, like I say, hit that like button. And until the next time, I'm out. Enjoy your damn day.